Now, the American Revolution creates a crisis for slavery in what now is the United States because of the, well, for two reasons. One is just the ideological contradiction between liberty and slavery. Our nation is founded by a revolution dedicated, rhetorically at least, to liberty, right? That's it. Jefferson said, we are creating an empire of liberty. Empire of liberty seems like an oxymoron, a contradiction of terms. How can an, an empire be an empire of liberty? But that's the point. This will be different. European empires are empires of oppression. The American empire will be an empire of liberty for everybody. And, um, or Tom Paine in Common Sense. The United States is the asylum for mankind. Anybody in the world seeking to escape oppressive government, oppressive conditions, can find a homeland in the United States. That's why Paine says, the American Revolution is not just one little place throwing off another. It is a world historical event. It creates a nation dedicated to liberty. And yet, of course, half a million slaves are in the colonies in 1776. This is one of my, uh, uh, my favorites. This is a runaway slave ad that Thomas Jefferson put in a Virginia newspaper, okay, uh, in 1769. Sandy, run away from the subscriber, a mulatto slave called Sandy. The, the Southern press was full, of, and by the way, the New York press too, was full of notices like this, runaway slave ads, which are very useful for historians in that they give physical descriptions of the slaves, their, their, their skills, any identifying marks, scars, language abilities, anything that can help you identify this person. But here is Thomas Jefferson, the father of American liberty, seeking to get back Sandy, who ran away from Jefferson. And indeed, Sandy was recaptured and then sold. Even though Jefferson didn't like to buy and sell slaves, he did sell Sandy, who had run away. At the, Constitu I mean, at the uh, Continental Congress, where the Declaration of Independence was written by Jefferson, in his original draft, he included a clause condemning slavery, but in a sort of indirect way. You know, the Declaration of Independence begins with immortal, the immortal preamble about the rights of mankind. Then it descends into, well, up here on the west side, we're used to this, just a lot of kvetching, you might say, <laughs> against George III. Kvetch, kvetch, kvetch. George III has done this. George III, give us a break already, you know. <laughs> George III has done all these horrible things. One of the things George III did was to somehow deprive Africans of their liberty. So wait a minute, what about all these guys who are owning them and running plantations? Well, no, no, because George because at some point the Virginians tried to reduce the number of slaves being brought in. They thought the slave population was growing so big it was a danger, and the British vetoed that law because they made too much money off the slave trade and they didn't want the colony. So, all right, this George III is responsible for all this. Well, it's not in, that clause is not in the final version of the Declaration of Independence. Why not? Because Georgia and South Carolina objected to it. They didn't want anything which suggested there was anything wrong with slavery. Now, if you ever saw the musical 1776, they burst into song about this. There's a whole song about this clause. It, this is not historically accurate. The, the, <laughs> the delegates did not sing about it, but nonetheless, the fact is that, um, yeah, that it, it's not in there. Um, but in the, 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 Davis talks about this, but very quickly, the, the, the contradiction between liberty and slavery does make a difference. It, it, very slowly, but still it happens. In the revolutionary era, the northern states slowly move toward abolishing slavery. Takes a while. Pennsylvania, 1780. All right, that's cool. New York waits till 1799. New Jersey waits till 1804. And these are what they call gradual emancipation laws. They don't just, they don't actually free anybody. They provide for the freedom of children henceforth born. The child of a slave will become free after serving a quote-unquote apprenticeship of 25 years or something. So the, 
death of slavery in the North is drawn out over a long, in New York it's not till 1827 that slavery is finally gone. Nonetheless, for the first time now there is a line across the country between slave states and free states. That line didn't exist previously. Moreover, the British, for their own reasons, offered freedom to American slaves. This is nothing new. Offering freedom to the slaves of your opponents was a well-known, time-honored way to weaken them. And Lord Dunmore, the British commander in um, Virginia, in 1775, offered freedom to any male slave who would join his army, and some did. Later, uh, the British commander in the North offered freedom to any slave, anybody who runs away from the patriot. If you're owned by a loyalist, forget it, but if you're owned by a <laughs> rebel patriot, we'll give you freedom. And, you know, the British occupied New York City. The whole revolution, New York City was occupied by the British, and New York became a haven for runaway slaves who took the British at their word and said, all right, hey, we can get freedom if we get to New York. And they did. And in fact, when the British left at the end of the Revolution, they took with them between three or 4,000 slaves from New York City. I mean, most of them were not New York City slaves. They had escaped to New York. George Washington, um, I guess it was Carleton, the uh, British commander, um, Washington met with him about this, and Washington said, well, give us back our slaves, man. And, uh, and by the way, he said, um, I'd like you to keep the lookout for a couple of mine who I think escaped. And Carlton said, no, 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 we can't do that. It would be dishonorable to return to slavery people who we have promised their liberty. Not that the British were abolitionists, but this was their policy. And so uh, w overall, when the British left New York, Charleston, Savannah, we don't know exactly, but maybe 40,000 slaves left with them. Many of them ended up in Britain or in Sierra Leone. The nation the, in West Africa of Sierra Leone was created in the 1780s as a place to send these refugee or uh, slaves who had gotten their freedom uh, with the British. So slavery is disrupted, but the sad fact is that at the end of the revolutionary era, let us say 1790, there were 700,000 slaves in the new nation. There had been 500,000 in 1776. So slavery is not going anywhere, unfortunately.